Section 6, The Dorcas Movement in the Church. Chapter 17, Women Called to the Work. There certainly should be a larger number of women engaged in the work of ministering to suffering humanity, uplifting, educating them how to believe, simply to believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior. And as souls give themselves to the Lord Jesus, making an entire surrender, they will understand the doctrine. I am pained because our sisters in America are not more of them doing the work they might do for the Lord Jesus. Abiding in Christ, they would receive courage and strength and faith for the work. Many women love to talk. Why can't they talk the words of Christ to perishing souls? The more closely we are related to Christ, the heart learns the wretchedness of souls that do not know God and who do not feel the dishonor they are doing to Christ who has brought them with the price. When the believing women shall feel the burden of souls and burden of sins not their own, they will be working as Christ worked. They will consider no sacrifice too great to make to win souls to Christ. And everyone who has his love for souls is born of God. They are ready to follow in his footsteps, and their words and voice would be talents employed in the master's service. The very nourishment coming from the parent stock to their own souls would flow out in distinct channels of love to souls who are withered and dried up. In this work is a constant education. The desire to be a blessing discovers the weakness and inefficiency of the worker. This drives the soul to God in prayer, and the Lord Jesus gives light and His Holy Spirit, and they understand that it is Christ who does the melting and breaking of the hard heart. Letter 133, 1898. The Value of Organization The work you are doing to help our sisters feel their individual accountability to God is a good and necessary work. Long has it been neglected, but when this work is laid out in clear, simple, definite lines, we may expect that home duties, instead of being neglected, will be done much more intelligently. The Lord would have us ever to urge the worth of the human soul upon those who do not understand its value. If we can arrange to have regular, organized companies instructed intelligently in regard to the part they should act as servants of the Master, our churches will have a life and vitality that they have long needed. The excellency of the soul Christ has saved will be appreciated. Our sisters generally have a hard time with their increasing families and their unappreciated trials. I have so longed for women who could be educated to help our sisters rise from their discouragement and feel that they could do a work for the Lord. This is bringing rays of sunshine into their own lives, which are reflected into the hearts of others. God will bless you and all who unite with you in this grand work. Letter 54, 1899. The Lord has a work for women. The Lord has a work for women as well as men. They may take their places in His work at this crisis, and He will work through them. If they are imbued with a sense of their duty and labor under the influence of the Holy Spirit, they will have just the self-possession required for this time. The Savior will reflect upon these self-sacrificing women the light of His countenance and will give them a power that exceeds that of men. They can do in families a work that men cannot do, a work that reaches the inner life. They can come close to the hearts of those whom men cannot reach. Their labor is needed. Review and Herald, August 26, 1902. Women have a high destiny. Sisters, we may do a noble work for God if we will. Women does not know her power. God did not intend that her capabilities should be all absorbed in questioning, What shall I eat? What shall I drink? And wherewithal shall I be clothed? There is a higher purpose for woman, a grander destiny. She should develop and cultivate her powers, for God can employ them in the great work of saving souls from eternal ruin. Testimonies, Volume 4, page 642. We may safely say that the dignity and importance of woman's mission and distinctive duties are of a more sacred and holy character than the duties of man. Let woman realize the sacredness of her work 
and in the strength and fear of God take up her mission. Testimonies, Volume 3, page 565. If we can impress upon the minds of our sisters the good which it is in their power to do through the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall see a large work accomplished. Letter 119, 1898. Women called to be messengers of mercy. We greatly need consecrated women who, as messengers of mercy, will visit the mothers and the children in their homes and help them in the everyday household duties, if need be, before beginning to talk to them regarding the truth for this time. You will find that by this method you will have souls as the result of your ministry. Review and Herald, July 12, 1906. Why stand ye idle? The Lord of the Vineyard is saying to many women who are now doing nothing, Why stand ye here all the day idle? They may be instruments of righteousness, rendering holy service. It was Mary who first preached a risen Jesus, and the refining, softening influence of Christian women is needed in the great work of preaching the truth now. If there were twenty women where now there is one who would make the saving of souls their cherished work, we should see many more converted to the truth. Zealous and continued diligence in the cause of God would be wholly successful and would astonish them with its results. The work must be accomplished through patience and perseverance, and in this is manifested the real devotion to God. He calls for deeds, not words only. The work of God is worthy of our best efforts. Often we are so wrapped up in our selfish interests that our hearts are not allowed to take in the needs and wants of humanity. We are lacking in deeds of sympathy and benevolence in sacred and social ministering to the needy, the oppressed, and the suffering. Signs of the Time, September 16, 1886. The Work to be Done Inaction and delicate idleness is weakening the life forces of young women. There are those who spend hours of precious time in bed, which is not blessing them with increase of strength or relieving others from burdens but is bringing upon them debility and confirming them in wrong habits. These hours idled away needlessly in bed can never be regained. The sin of time thus lost is marked in the books of records. There is enough to do in this busy world of ours. There are enough in God's great family who need sympathy and aid. If our own work does not demand our time, there are sick to be visited, the poor to be helped and encouraged. The Health Reformer, June 1873. A unique place for women in the work. There is a wide field in which our sisters may do good service for the Master in the various branches of the work connected with his cause. Through missionary labor, they can reach a class that our ministers cannot. There is work neglected or done imperfectly that could be thoroughly accomplished by the help that sisters can give. There are so many kinds of work, too laborious for women, which our brethren are called to engage in, that many branches of missionary work are neglected. Many things connected with different churches are left undone that women, if properly instructed, could attend to. Our sisters might serve as church clerks, and the church business would not be so sadly neglected. There are many other offices connected with the cause of God which our sisters are better qualified to fill than our brethren, and in which they might do efficient service. Review and Herald, December 19, 1878. Missionary Correspondence Women can do good work in the missionary field by writing to friends and learning their true feelings in relation to the cause of God. Very valuable items are brought to light through this means. The workers should not seek for self-exaltation, but to present the truth in its simplicity wherever they shall have an opportunity. Signs of the Times, September 16, 1886. God's Claim Upon Our Time and Money We have no right, my Christian sisters, to waste our time and give example to others who are less able than we to waste their time and energies upon needless ornaments, upon dress or furniture, or to indulge in superfluities in food. We have religious duties to perform, 
And if we neglect these duties and give our time to needless things, we will dwarf the intellect and separate the affections from God. The author of our existence has claims upon our time and our money. He has poor and suffering ones all around us that money may relieve, and cheering, encouraging words bless. Christ identifies himself with the wants of suffering humanity. As you neglected to visit the widow and orphans, tried in the furnace of affliction, suffering want and privation, you did not realize that Christ would mark the circumstances against you in the book of records as though you had neglected him. The Health Reformer, June 1873. Engaged in Personal Evangelism. A direct necessity is being met by the work of women who have given themselves to the Lord and are reaching out to help a needy, sin-stricken people. Personal evangelistic work is to be done. The women who take up this work carry the gospel to the homes of the people in the highways and byways. They read and explain the word to the families, praying with them, caring for the sick, relieving their temporal necessities. Testimonies, Volume 8, page 118.